Well, hello and welcome to Live in the Hive, the only online magazine show dedicated to theatre across Greater Manchester. I'm Michelle Eagleton. I'm with you for the next half an hour, bringing you interviews, news and some exclusive previews of some of the shows coming our way. It's all very exciting. So stay with us. We have got loads in this show to tell you about. And of course, we stream every week on the Live in the Hive Facebook page and the wonderful I Love of Manchester Facebook page. So hello if you're watching on both of those channels this evening. And of course, I Love Manchester is the iconic city brand dedicated to community and culture across Manchester. And we love it lots too. Now tonight's show, we have got great guests for you. We've got these guys. Oh, what a wonderful pair. We've got Oliver Farnworth. You might remember him from Coronation Street as Andy Carver. He is stepping into the shoes of Michael Douglas in Fatal Attraction on stage. And we've got Jake Quickenden. Remember X Factor, Dancing on Ice, I'm a Celebrity. Of course, you know Jake Quickenden. Well, he is currently starring on stage in the iconic 80s musical, Book Loose, and they are going to be chatting to me. I am very excited about this one. We have got them and we have also got our regular things. Yes, we like to keep you updated with what's going on on the theatre and we've got some great announcements to tell you about this week. And not only have we got that, but we have got a very good exclusive. We have got one of the songs from this brand new musical, Fantastically Great Women Who Changed the World. So please do stay tuned until the end of the show when we will be revealing that first song from the show. And it is an absolute cracker. You are going to love it. Now, the show comes to the Lowry in April. So if you like it, you know what to do. Go book those tickets kids guys but this evening yes we have got lots of people in the hive to talk to me and firstly I got to chat earlier this week to a wonderful guy he is so down to earth and I feel like you know him already because he has been on our screens for the past couple of years in lots of reality tv shows now he's treading the boards and he's singing again which shot him to fame back in the day on X Factor yes of course I'm talking about Jake Quickenden and he caught up with me to tell me a little bit about what we can expect when Footloose comes to Manchester. We love you in Manchester I have to say I think we've kind of semi-adopted you Jake because you just feel like one of us. Yeah a little bit I lived in Manchester for so long as well I was there for four years um, and I just love Manchester as a city as a place the people do you know what I mean? It's just such a nice place. So I'm happy with that. I'll take that. Yeah, absolutely. And we can't wait. And we get you in an absolutely cracking show. Footloose. Yeah. I mean, I've got to say, loved the 80s, loved the film starring Kevin Bacon. Now, yeah. you've been touring with this, haven't you? How's how's it going? What were the rehearsals like? What's it like uh, doing the show? So the rehearsals for me, everyone else got five weeks rehearsals. I got 10 days because I was doing another show. So I had to learn this show in 10 days. And not only is it singing, dancing, acting, I also play the guitar in it as well with the band oh. for some of the songs. Um, so it was honestly, the rehearsal process for me was one of the most stressful I've, I've ever had. I remember after about day five, I phoned my missus and I said, I'm going to have to pull out because I don't think I can learn all this. Like, it, I'm really struggling. And she was like, you say this all the time, you'll be fine, keep going. And then and then I flew to Zurich because that's where the rest of the cast were. They were performing in Zurich. And I watched the show and I performed with all them. And I was like, right, I can do this. This is all right. I can learn it. It's not as much as what I thought. And the rest of the cast kind of pulled me together and spurred me on. And, um, yeah, it's just such an amazing show. It's fun. It's fun fast it's it's hard work i burn some calories i tell you that for a fact but um it's it's amazing oh my god that is incredible that story behind it now yeah Matt. you play willard in this all right so for anybody who hasn't seen the film before shame on them uh, and doesn't shame. know what footloose is it's a classic but tell us a little bit about the story and how willard comes into that story the base of the story is about um, a guy called Brent who lives in Chicago and he moves to a small town called Beaumont. 
where loud music, drinking, drugs, obviously, um, and dancing has all been banned because they had a big accident. Um, and the Reverend, played by the amazing Darren Day, um, he has banned all these things. So Ren moves there thinking that it's going to be quite fun and he, he can't even dance, he can't do anything. So, um, so that's how the story starts. And then you get my character who is very happy in that life. He loves his little town. He doesn't know anything else. I, I can't imagine Willard to think there's anything else out there in the big world because he's so happy where he is. He's just, he's a country boy, he's a cowboy, do you know what I mean? Um, and then Ren comes along and he's never met anyone like Ren before. He, Willard usually just drinks, fights and works on his cars and goes to school. I think he's probably been held back in school a few years and he's one of them. Um, and then he meets this Ren who slowly starts to show him that there's much more out there than just Beaumont. And and you can and you can fight these things when you don't when you don't believe something's right. So yeah, my character is I think lovable, a little bit stupid, but it suits me to a T. Um and yeah, I'm just a, a really good character to play. Am I right yeah. in thinking that in the film Willard can't dance and has a real issue dancing? That's the same in the show. Now you can dance on ice, we know, because you won that series, Jay. But I can't so dance. do you have this to thing. ham it up? I can't, so you... I can't dance. No, I can't, can't dance. dance. Honestly, right? So everyone always says, you won dancing on ice. I'm like, yeah, but how much dancing did I actually do? I didn't. I skated. Yeah, but if you can dance, stroke, skate on ice, surely when you're on flat ground, it's got to be no, a lot It's so much different, honestly. And this is what I was struggling with in the rehearsals. They, they show me some dance routine. And I can boogie when I'm at a Jaeger bomb, do you know what I mean? Like in Menagerie or something. But like when when I had um when I haven't and I'm getting taught choreography, I, it, it it baffles my mind where where you go and these counts and stuff. And it took me a little bit. And so I'm a little bit like Willard in that aspect that I can't really dance amazingly, but by the end, Willard can dance. And yeah. you see that in the actual story when I learned to dance. Well, we know you can sing. And do you know what? When I was coming to do this interview, one of the first things that I thought about you wasn't X Factor. Do you know what? Because I feel that you have departed so much from that. Yeah. And you can do lots of other things that you kind of forget that you started out on X Factor as the singer and you have a cracking voice, Jake. Yeah, a, a lot of people, you know what, I get, I've got followers now from on, on Instagram that maybe never followed me when I did X Factor, but they've seen me in SAS or they've seen me in the jungle or Dancing on Ice or all the other blooming shows I've done. Um, and then I'll put a, a, a video of me singing on my Instagram and people are like, oh my God, you can sing. And I'm like, yeah, that's kind of how I started. Um, but yeah, it's, it's amazing being back on stage singing. It's been a, a tough couple of years for everybody, really. Mm. So that's why this show's so nice, because people just love having a laugh and they love dancing and, and there's a real feel-good factor to it. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, I, I get to sing. I, I get to dance a bit. Um, I play the guitar. I act. I've got to speak in a Southern American accent, which is hard enough when you're as Northern as I am. Um, <laughs> So yeah, there's a lot going on, and it's um, it's definitely been a challenge. But I I never shy away from a challenge. I don't think anyone should. I feel like if you want to get somewhere in your life, then you need to get, take these challenges on and grab them with both hands and embrace them. So that's what I always yeah. try and do, to be honest. And yeah, you've totally done that throughout your career, and I honestly can't wait to to see you back on stage and and hear you again. But I am a little bit worried, right, Jay? I'm not worried about the dancing. Even though you said it's a little bit, I'm not worried about the accent. Even though you said, <laughs> I'm definitely not worried about the singing. But you were born in 1988. Come on, right? Yeah. You really didn't see the 80s that much. Not really. A couple of no. years. So this is really new for you. So what I thought I'd do is kind of do a quiz stroke masterclass for you. Is that okay? About come the on. 80s? All right. I'm going to surprise you here. I'm, I'm going to get a few right. I think. Right. Okay. I'll hold you to that. This is a film that was out in the 80s. Can you name it? Here we go. Oh, my God. 
Oh, Wait. Come on. You've seen um, this film. It is a classic. Despite being in the 80s, it is still really going strong. No, I know I know exactly what it is. I can picture it. But never ending story. Oh, never ending story. Oh, God, I know that. I knew that. <laughs> Good film, that. though. Yeah. What a great film. Actually, one of my favourites. I love that film. Uh, I absolutely loved it. Okay. So we know that the outfits were quite dodgy in the 80s. Name the outfit. What was that called in the 80s? And it wasn't called a tracksuit. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even think. This is a shell suit. Now, a shell just, suit. God, yeah. Go just on. thank yourself. Look at. I've got a shell book. suit as well. Yep. A shell. Have you got a shell suit? Yeah, I bought one recently, and everyone took the mick out of us, saying, "What is that?" <laughs> Actually, do you know what? When I looked up shell suits, they are coming back in fashion. They're cool. So, you, know, you might want to hang on to it. Now, if you don't get this one right yeah. you need to just like leave the interview right now okay this right. was a tv show that was in the 80s starring joan collins um crossroads. dynasty dynasty <laughs> jake dynasty i've never heard of it that was <laughs> I am so, i'm showing my age i'm gonna leave this interview feeling so blooming ancient i, I really know am. That. i've never heard of that right well this one you've got 10 years to choose from okay so i'm just looking at a year in the 80s that okay. this guy was born and you will definitely recognize this guy justin timberlake i'd say 82. oh so close 81 81, 81. Yeah. he was born 81. january 81 in memphis so is he 80. 40 now then yeah god is yeah he's gone over 40. i think he'll be knocking on for 41 now wow i know i know it the time goes so fast it does nearly got it nearly got it though right now this woman definitely isn't 40 at the minute she's a bit older than that she's a pop star from the 80s she sung kids in america can you name this woman no <laughs> not a clue who that is oh it's kim wild who ah uh, Look okay, her up. I'll listen. Is she on Spotify? I'll have a listen. <laughs> Did you play with any toys in the 80s? I mean, at the end of the 80s, early 90s? If we're on about a Rubik's Cube, I did. I nearly picked a Rubik's Cube, but I went oh. for this because I thought you might have had one of these. Transformer? Yay! Of course I did. For a bonus, a bonus point, okay? Oh. Right. What character is that Transformer? Optimus Prime, isn't it? Yes! I tell you what, you're a slow burner there, but once you got started, you actually convinced me you were from the 80s. Thank you. That's that's my, my, my middle name, Jake Slow Burner Quickenden. It's great. You can go back to the cast now and go, yeah. you know what? I know who um, Kim Wilde is. Yeah. Oh, bless his cotton socks. He tried so hard at that 80s quiz. And he was born in the late 80s as well. So you know what? What a good sport and such a decent down-to-earth guy. I love chatting to Jake Quickenden there. And we found out that he owns a shell suit. Who would have thought? Jake Quickenden has a shell suit. You heard it here on Live in the Hive. Now, all we have to do is look out for him wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, Jake will be with us in Manchester very soon. He's coming at the end of February until the 5th of March. But what else is coming to Manchester? I hear you cry. Well, here we go with our Greater Manchester Theatre News. And next week, it's all about, oh, it's all about this guy. Gary Barlow, yes, that little known pop star. <laughs> well, he's coming to the stage. He's coming to the Lowry from the 22nd to the 27th next week with his one man show, A Different Stage. Now, it's not just because I'm bragging that I've put up this photograph of when I met Gary Barlow and he did Calendar Girls. I've got to say, that was a moment. But the guy next to him is Tim Firth, one of his best friends and also someone he's collaborated with a number of times. Not only on Calendar Girls, but you might remember the band, the Take That musical. Tim has done some of the script 
for Gary on a different stage. But what can you expect? Well, the first half is going to be very much about the Take That Day. So lots of stories there for Take That fans. And then the second half is going to be dedicated to the music that Gary has penned over the years and some of the stories behind the song. So it's going to be really interesting. And this is a really intimate gig as well. He played Runcorn, the Brinley Theatre, a small venue. He's coming to the Lowry, which we know is quite a bigger venue, but he's actually in the Keys Theatre and that only holds just over 400 people so it's going to be great they were the hottest tickets in town to get this week and i have to say ah, i backed one of them i am so excited everybody so if you are going look out for me i am there on wednesday night and i am going to be bringing you all the news from that show. I'm going to be on Instagram and Twitter giving you some exclusive and backstage gossip behind the scenes of that show. So I'm, I'm going to be taking you with me in the seats and I'm going to show you how excited I am. And you might even see footage of me being escort escorted from the theatre. I hope not. I'm going to behave. I promise. I promise Lowry and I promise Gary Barlow, honest. <laughs> now, not only has that been announced this week and those tickets been on sale, but we've also got something that got me very excited. It was the release of some photos of one of my other favourite musicals. Ah. Oh. The Lion King. It is an absolute classic from Disney and it came to the stage, of course. We saw it in 2015 when it came to Manchester the last time. It should have been coming in 2020, but of course, the pandemic stopped that from happening. But it is back. It's back this year from the 27th of October to the 24th of December. So a long run there at the Palace Theatre. And I honestly can't wait for this. You've got the music of Elton John and Tim Rice. You've got new songs songs and original score. Puppetry is amazing and the cast has just been released for this. Now you'll see Nala there, Noquanda Cosueo, she played the role in Germany and Brazil and you've also got this guy playing Simba, he is Stevenson Arden Soji and they are joined by a wonderful ensemble. Look at that, it's going to be absolutely spectacular so watch out for those tickets going on sale for The Lion King, it is an absolutely spectacular show and if you want to hear about any more shows or theatre or what's going on around Manchester you know where to head this week head to I Love Manchester next up we are going to take a look at my chat with the wonderful Oliver Farnworth. Now, you remember him from Coronation Street. Yes, he played Andy Carver. Now he is taken to the stage in such an iconic role. Remember the film Fatal Attraction? Well, it's on the stage. Yes, bunny boiler scene and everything. So I just had to find out more about this. It comes next week to the Opera House and here is what Oliver had to say. So Ollie, you are back in Manchester with Fatal Attraction. I mean, this is some play. It's pretty full on, I have to admit. It's pretty full on. Yeah, it's it's like a roller coaster. Once you get on it, you can't get off. So it's two hours of, of um, exhilarating kind of uh, twists and turns and suspense and drama and uh, all the stuff you'd expect from the film put on stage. Because it's such an iconic film, you know, people, you know, flocked to that in 1987. I can't believe like nearly 35 years ago it was out. It's like, wow. So how does it feel to kind of have that weight on your shoulders, I suppose. Yeah, there's, there's a reasonable about, amount of um, weight of kind of trepidation that comes with that. I think, I think like with any adaptation, you've got to give kind of reverence to where it's come from, to the original film, the original story, and understand that audiences are going to come and want to see parts of that. We're not, we're not you know, kind of, kind of re remaking the wheel. But at the same time, um, <clears throat> you know, times times change, and um, I think in its historical context, um, the the film was a kind of snapshot of the society it was set in, and James Dead and the writer has has very much kind of updated that uh, sort of thematically, and um, yeah, has em embraced modern society, modern technology, but also the the sort of day and age that we that we live in today. So. 
Yeah, it's it's a fresh production. Absolutely, and you know, great cast. What was it like going for the role as well? Did you know who you know your leading ladies either side yeah. were going to be? Yeah, I, I knew Kim was attached, um, and then I found out Susie um, was was playing Beth. Uh, my onstage wife, and I'd worked with Susie before. We'd done a um, a production in Edinburgh, Edinburgh Festival a few years back, so we know each other well. And obviously, I'd worked with Kim on Corrie. Even though we worked out, we never really crossed paths that that much. We sort of said I might have served her in the in the bistro, and she might have given me a pint in the Rovers, uh, but we never had big storylines. But obviously, being a part of the Corrie cast, you're always always together in the building and in the green room, and um, going out on nights out and to awards and things like that. So yeah, we, we knew each other quite well as well. So it's really, really nice to um to be to be back on stage after a couple of years. You know, it's been a quite a quiet couple of years all round, but also with familiar faces. It's really good. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think the audiences as well and the reviews that you've been getting they love it you know not only is it great for people to be back at the theatre but something that is fresh and new like this to be on the stage I'm thinking bunny boiler scene that's got to be a moment right well we can't not have a bunny that's all I'll say that's all I'll say oh. you know, too much away but uh but the bunny does feature yeah what what has the reaction been to your character because it's a funny one, isn't it? You know, mm -hmm. the role that you play, because we like to put the blame on the guy. But mm. it's, I think it's very much a bit of both, really, on this one. I mean, arguably, at, point, at points of the story, uh, you, you absolutely could say that, you could legitimise that. I think, I think for me, um, playing, playing any kind of character, you have to sort of, shed shed your own skin in a way and and try and find the faults in the character the reasons for their their behavior and um and their shortcomings as well so it's been it's been an interesting one he's he's a pretty con conflicted character and absolutely not not without faults and not without blame whatsoever so it's just kind of getting under the skin of a character like that and and trying to find where the um, motives come from for their behaviour, I guess. Had you seen the movie prior to getting the role? And have you made a conscious effort, I suppose, to stay clear of watching? Yeah, well, as, a, as, a, as growing up in the in the eighties, I was I was kind of around when it when it came out, and then I, I saw it in the nineties. I think in terms of a character, you know, Michael Douglas is character in that um was obviously extremely kind of iconic and there would be a trap of going oh what did he do there what did he do there and i think as an actor it's, it's a dangerous dangerous place so I, I try and steer clear of that if i'm doing any sort of adaptation and this is quite a demanding role for you because you're playing a narrator as well aren't you so we're going to see you in a narrative role as well and yeah. so are you pretty much on stage all the time Pretty much, yeah. I'm just looking now. I've got my manuka, my manuka honey here. I'm in my dressing room at the moment. It's definitely wonderful. need that, Ollie. You definitely need it. My ride, need a manuka it. honey for the voice, because yeah, it is. It's two hours, and I, I basically don't leave the stage. Uh, well, I leave it a couple of times in the second half, but only for glimpses. So everything happens on stage, and that's one of the exciting things about the production. I think it moves so fast. There are no dark points on stage it never it never goes black we everything happens scene changes happen around people costume changes on stage so it, it really keeps the tension I think and we've we've worked all that stuff in kind of dramatically so um so yeah there's there's never a, a sort of dull moment on stage and that was brilliant kind of being able to be part of that process when it is something that's come to the stage for the first time because you're really making your mark on it you know you're kind yeah. of creating that role and those roles all together yeah i think um i i thought at first i was like wow this is pretty pretty i've, I've played a part in the past i did saturday night and sunday morning and i played arthur seaton in that and that was another role where i never left the stage um and i thought oh, yeah I could, but, but that was sort of 15 years ago now and i was like oh god i'm not going to be able to remember it i don't know what i'm doing but actually it's quite nice in a way because you you start the journey and then you never have a break in your concentration. I actually find it quite difficult going, well, I've got 11 minutes now until the next scene. I go back to the dressing room. I can't really switch off. So actually being on stage the whole time, it, it really flies by and it's quite good 
it's quite a good workout really um and it, it really helps with the, the sort of character arc as well because you don't have time to switch off for anybody who's seen the film and knows it inside out you are going to see a different kind of twist in this i'm not wanting to give anything away but it's not entirely exact is it no, no. I'm, I'm trying to be as as well, as canny as i can like i've said james did and was was very keen to kind of um up the, update the story the sort of themes of the story and and bring it into a into a kind of more modern context and and maybe widen the debate around kind of culpability and blame and um yeah mo motives so we we definitely see maybe a bit more of a redress of the balance at the end i might say but apart from that can't really uh, Oh, I am! I am so excited. Are you looking forward to coming back to Manchester? Yeah, I, really it good. felt like your home for so long, Golly. No, I know, I know. Um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to it. I think, I think I've heard a few of the Corrie lot will come down on maybe Tuesday night, I believe. So it'd be good to, uh, good to bump into a few of them and um, say hi. And yeah. Be good. I am so gutted that they killed you off in Coronation Street. It's that that they nasty feeling, bloke. They, they killed me off twice. Not, not I know. twice. Unbelievable. But <laughs> hey, you mess with you mess with Pat Phelan, you get your come up and stone you. I know. If he turns up on Tuesday night, I'll be like, hey, out of there right yeah. now. No, you couldn't get a nicer guy than Conor McIntyre. So uh, yeah, he'd be welcome. He'd be welcome with open arms. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. Well, good luck with the rest of the tour. I'll see you on Tuesday. Right. I'm prepared to jump at a few moments, gasp at a lot of moments and relish every mm. single yeah. minute of it. So Thank it's going to be brilliant. I've been waiting for this since it was first announced, Dolly. That's what we like to hear. That's what we like to hear. Oh, Fatal Attraction on stage. That's got to be a winner, isn't it? Yes. Oh, and what a cast. I think Kim Marsh is definitely going to rock it as Alex Forrest, the Glenn Close role. So I'll tell you all about it next week. Check out my socials. I'm going to see it. And also check out I Love Manchester for their review. And talking of next week, who have we got on the show? Well, we have got the cast of The Last Quiz Night on Earth. And check this out. They're going to be in the hive with me having a glass of wine. Oh, you can't miss that one. And we've got this guy. Oh, if you're a fan of Les Mis, it is the guy who's starring as Jean Valjean in the tour, which is coming to the Lowry. It is, of course, Dean Chisnell. What a guy. What a great lineup we've got for next week. But I'm going to leave you tonight playing out of the show with an exclusive preview of a brilliant new musical. It's called The Fantastically Great Women Who Change the World. And this is quite an apt song. It's deeds, not words. And it's a woman who is playing Emmeline Pankhurst. And of course, she's from Manchester. Got to got to play it out guys and you are gonna love this song and love this musical it's coming to the lowry in april so do watch out for it and i'd like to dedicate this song and the show to one of the fantastically great women i had the pleasure of knowing so this is for you gainer and i will see you all next week next sunday until then take care see you It's 1903, and thanks to me, the UK strives towards equality, acknowledging the poverty of women's opportunity necessitates a need for taking action with alacrity. The future's in our hands, so make your mark and stand with me. Or to put it a little more simply, we need deeds, not words. Ladies, if you want to be heard We need blood, sweat, tears Need to find a way to face our fears All these years we've been rejected With no say in who's elected For what we deserve We need deeds, not words Deeds, not words Deeds, not words We're the suffragettes, soldiers in petticoats There's never been a better bunch for getting out the vote I'll never let you down, I'm pushing out the boat If they 
don't like it, that's too bad, I'll shove it down the throat We don't want your sympathy Save the condescending talk, oh please What we need We need deeds, not words Ladies, if you wanna be heard We need blood, sweat, tears Need to find a way to face your fears There's no way Year after year 